You may have seen my recent video where I tore apart an iMac and added an additional SSD amongst other upgrades. The iMac I bought had a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. These drives are very fast, like four times faster than regular SATA 3 SSDs. And while they're coming down in price on the PC side, they're still pretty expensive. For Mac users though, it doesn't matter because good old Apple uses a proprietary SSD and you guessed it, they are organ donation expensive. So I'm going to show you how I, and how you too, can expand your Mac's internal SSD storage on the cheap, without compromising noticeable performance. Apple started putting Fusion drives into its desktops in 2012, and still offers them in all base models of iMac and Mac Mini. Now, a Fusion drive is actually made up of two drives. There is an SSD and a hard drive disk, and through software they're combined together. It looks to you like a single drive, but it's not, and the computer knows that it's not. Things you need to access quickly, like your operating system so that the computer boots and wakes from sleep rapidly, your applications so they open immediately, etc., are all stored on the faster drive, the SSD. And macOS even intelligently learns what files you use frequently and stores those on the faster SSD as well. Whereas files you rarely open and big video files, etc., are all stored on the slower spinning hard drive with more storage space. Now, unlike Intel Optane, a Fusion drive is not a cache drive. Cache drives are the same in that they also help speed up repeatable tasks like booting the computer and opening applications, but they don't provide uh, usable storage to the user. Whereas if I have a one terabyte SSD and a two terabyte hard drive, I get a three terabyte Fusion volume. The problem with Apple's Fusion drives that they ship from the factory is that they use mechanical spinning hard drives and even high RPM ones are really, really slow. But you can actually make a Fusion Drive in Mac OS with two SSDs. And that's exactly what I did. I combined my really fast, very expensive 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD with a slower, but still very fast, and more importantly affordable, two terabyte SATA SSD, giving me over 2.5 terabytes of storage. Now, I first started by doing a time machine backup of my drives because I was going to wipe them clean. And then I downloaded macOS Sierra and installed it onto a USB thumb drive, which I used to boot into recovery mode. From there, I wiped the drives and ran a few terminal commands to combine them together into a single Fusion drive. I then restored everything onto the new drive. And I was pretty blown away. The combined SSDs, the Fusion drives were still very fast, faster, at least perceivably faster than the SATA SSD. And that's thanks to, again, the applications and the operating system being stored on the lower latency, faster NVMe drive. Even better, the SATA SSD is no slouch and it handles pretty much everything I threw at it like a champ. Even editing 8K red raw footage, which again, I don't shoot, but if I did, that has a bit rate of 300 megabytes per second, I believe, and that is much slower than the 460 megabytes per second that the SATA SSD is capable of reading at. So no, it no longer crushes benchmarks, but it doesn't need to. What it needs to be lightning fast at, like pretty much the whole operating system is, and then it's still very fast at pretty much every other task. Despite all the benefits, that doesn't mean that a Fusion Drive is perfect for every application, and as you might suspect, there are a few downsides. First of all, wear and tear on your SSDs will likely be increased because the OS is continually moving those frequently used files back and forth between the faster and the slower drive. Furthermore, it's really only practical for a desktop computer. On iMac, you don't necessarily need to install it inside the machine like I did, although that's the more seamless way. You could also use a Thunder Thunderbolt enclosure, or if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of speed on your SATA SSD, you could use a USB 3.1 to SATA adapter. But MacBook users have soldered NVMe storage, and as of 2011, when they ditched the DVD drive, there's no room for a SATA drive. So those guys are a bit SOL. When you buy a MacBook, buy as much storage as you can afford because you can't ever upgrade. If you're on a MacBook or even a Mac and you need to free up some space on your machine, check out my killer guide here. If you liked this video, be sure to like it. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy.